on July the 5th of 2009, I decided it was time to go see a dermatologist for some type of a growth that I had on my finger. The dermatologist examined me and told me she really did not know what it was and that a biopsy needed to be done. I agreed. A biopsy was done. A bandage was put over my finger. I went home. Nervously, I waited for almost a week to get a phone call. On July 11th of 2009, I received a phone call from the doctor's office. I was told I had squamous cell skin cancer. I had never heard of squamous cell or basal cell before. I had heard of melanoma. I asked some questions. They tried to explain it to me. They told me I was going to need to see a specialist that did skin cancer surgery. They would make the appointment for me and that doctor's office would call to actually schedule the appointment. When I got home, I started Googling skin cancer and squamous cell cancer. I wanted to find out more about it. I learned that it could spread. That was scary. A couple days after getting the diagnosis, I received a phone call from the, the skin cancer surgeon's office to schedule the appointment. I had to wait almost three weeks. On August the 5th of 2009, I had my appointment. I went, I checked in, I had paperwork to fill out. I had to show my insurance card. I filled out the paperwork and I had a seat. I was amazed at how many other people were in the waiting room that were either waiting to have some type of surgery or were in a various state of having surgery. Approximately 20 minutes went by and a nurse came out and called me and took me back into one of the rooms. She asked me a bunch of questions. She looked at my finger and said, that is really nasty looking. She said, the doctor will be in in a few minutes. Maybe five minutes went by, the doctor comes in, he introduces himself, he looks at my finger and he says, that is nasty. He proceeds to tell me that if he determines that the cancer has gone deep into my finger, I might have to see an orthopedic surgeon who would decide whether my finger was savable or not. If my finger was not savable and it, the cancer had spread to my hand, my hand would have to be amputated as well. The doctor takes a syringe, fills it with the local anesthetic, and tells me he's going to inject the anesthetic on each side of my finger. And I'm thinking, oh boy, this is really going to be fun. He injected one side of my finger. It hurt, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Then he did the other side of the finger. And since I didn't utter a sound, he looked at me smiling. He says, I expected to hear some four letter word expletives come out of your mouth. And I thought, you're lucky you can't read my mind. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny now to think back, but it really wasn't all that funny that, on that particular day. He then begins to explain to me what he's gonna do. They reclined the chair, which I'm really glad they did because I really didn't want to see it. They took a rubber glove, a rubber surgical glove, and made a small tourniquet and 
wrap that around the base of my finger because he told me this is going to bleed a lot and we're going to try to minimize the amount of blood. And I thought, okay, as long as I don't see it, I don't care what you do. My finger was so numb, he could have hit it with a hammer and I wouldn't have felt the thing. He begins. I don't feel any pain, but I feel him taking my hand and turning it in different positions. After about 30 minutes, I'm told that phase one is done. They heavily bandage my finger for what I was told at this point, I had a big hole in my finger and the heavy bandaging was to protect it. When I got up out of the chair, I walked outside, I needed some fresh air and I looked at my finger and how it was bandaged and I got scared and I started crying. I didn't know what to expect. I was in the waiting room for roughly 90 minutes while they did the pathology on the tissue sample. The nurse came out and she said, there's still some cancer. The doctor's going to have to remove some more. And I said, okay. They take me back in. They situate me in the chair. The doctor comes in. He starts doing more of his procedure. This time it took maybe 15 to 20 minutes. When he was done, they bandaged up my finger. They told me to go out to the waiting room that it's going to be 30 to 45 minutes. 30 minutes later, the nurse comes out and says, all the cancer in your finger has been removed. And I'm thinking, great. Now they're going to put a Band-Aid on it or they're going to sew it up and then I can go home. What I was told next scared me. I was informed that because the area on my finger was so deep, it was going to require a skin graft. I have a scar under my left clavicle that originally was seven inches wide. It is now probably shrunk down to five, five and a half inches long. I'm taken into another surgical room. I have to put a gown on. They pull the gown down to expose my chest. The nurse takes a syringe, fills it with something, and she injects me in four different places. After about 15 minutes, the doctor comes in. He talks to me a little more and tells me what he's going to do. I don't know what kind of instruments were used. I didn't feel any pain, but I could feel a pulling sensation as he was cutting the skin and pulling it up or down till he got the right size and then that was cut off. And then they put a temporary bandage over where they had removed the skin graft. Then I feel them take my hand and they start unwrapping the bandage. Then the doctor tells me he's going to be sewing the skin graft in place. And I'm thinking, okay, as long as I don't feel anything, I'm all right. Well, it took almost 60 stitches to sew the skin graft onto my finger to where it covered up the whole area where the cancer was removed. This whole process of doing the skin graft took almost an hour. I was in no pain, I was in no discomfort, just a little on edge. I will mention this, I would have been more than happy if they would have sedated me totally while they did the skin graft. They use a cautery to control the bleeding, and if you've never smelled burnt skin before, it stinks. So every time they zap the skin to stop the bleeding, you had this odor of burning skin. 
when they got all through with my finger, they bandaged up my finger and the size of the bandaging on the finger was the equivalent of what you would put on a like a two inch piece of wood if you were wrapping tape around it. They told me they had to secure my finger so I could not bend it at all. After my finger was totally bandaged and I'm thinking, okay, what happens to the area where you did the skin graft? Then I see them take out this device that looked like a stapler, a big stapler. They had to put eight staples in my chest where they did the skin graft. I didn't feel it. I mean, there was no pain, but you could feel the sensation of pressure. When they got all done with the staples, they bandaged that area. They asked me if I was okay. I got up, they took me out of that room, back out of the waiting room to make an appointment for the following week. I went home that afternoon. I had my hand propped up on a pillow, which they advised. I really was in no pain. The doctor told me that the nerve blocks would last for several hours. He had given me a prescription for pain medication, which I never got filled. The worst part was that night when I tried to go to sleep, I had a constant pulling sensation from the area where they had done the skin graft. The next morning, Mr. Macho had to look at in the mirror at the site where they had done the skin graft. There was a lot of drainage and I don't mind telling you, I got a little bit lightheaded and almost passed out. So we called the doctor. They told me to come back in. They, I went back in. They put more bandage over the skin graft site so I couldn't see anything. Went, okay, great. A week later, I had to go back to have the bandages changed for the first time. And I'm going to tell you, it hurt like hell. Both my finger and where they had done the graft, there was drainage. The drainage had stuck to the bandages. So when they were removing the bandages, it was like pulling the skin. It hurt. They had to give me something. I don't remember what it was to try to calm me down. It did nothing. Finally, they got the bandages off. The doctor came in and looked at both of the sides. He said they were looking good. He said, you need to come back in a week. We'll recheck it again. They rebandaged my finger. They rebandaged the, the graft site. I went home. The next week I went back. This time it wasn't as bad because they had put some, I believe Vaseline or some kind of an antibiotic ointment on which kept the bandages from sticking to the skin. So that made it a whole lot easier. They changed the bandages. The doctor looked at, looked at both of the sites. He said, everything is looking good. They rebandaged it. Then he tells me, I want to see you bend your finger down and touch your palm. And I looked at him and I said, you have got to be kidding me. He took my hand in his hands and he slowly bent my finger down to where it would touch my palm. There was no way I could do that on my own. I went home, week number three, I had to go back again to get the bandage, bandages changed, get checked. This time I told the doctor, I said, I have a surprise for you. And he said, what? I took my hand, I don't know if you can see this, but I took my finger and I, my finger is shaking now just like it did that day, but very slowly I was able to move my finger down to the palm of my hand. And he said, that is great. He said, that is going to over time give you your mobility back in your finger. 
it took several months of doing that simple exercise to where I could do this and make a fist. So I'm fortunate that I still have my finger and I can use it. Now, I will tell you one thing about my finger. If you were to draw a line down the center of it, the left side has got normal feeling. The right side, there is no feeling because of the nerves that were cut and they did not regenerate. So for the rest of my life, half of my finger will be normal, half will not. 